in an electrified atmosphere filled with various colors and the buzz of anticipation. Courageous women in law enforcement from 18 African countries stormed Abuja for the first ever International Association of Women Police Conference to tackle the complex security challenges facing Africa. Adorned in their beautiful and smart ceremonial regalia, officers from various law enforcement agencies across 18 African countries, including Nigeria Police and Immigration Services, converged on the newly built magnificent Nigeria Police Resource Center. The conference venue had a kaleidoscope of colors, pomp and pageantry. Women police officers and security experts gathered to address the continent's pressing security concerns and exchange knowledge for change. They quickly settled in properly, from their arrival in the country to the fantastic welcome, the serene Abuja environment and the taste of sumptuous Nigerian delicacies. The International Association of Women Police, IAWP, African Region Training Conference, opened with a call to action to address Africa's security challenges and safety through collaboration and inclusivity. The conference, addressing Africa's security challenges and safety through collaboration and inclusivity, aims to train women police and security officers, equipping them with knowledge and skills to combat modern security threats. To set the tone for the conference, a short film packaged by Crime Fighters, your foremost security program, titled Balancing the Acts, The Dilemma of Women, highlighting the difficulties faced by police women in society, was premiered to the admiration of participants and guests. Everything is wonderful. Just wonderful. You won't believe the mess that happened at the oh. station today. Oh, oh, oh. Calm down. Calm down. Can I get you something to drink? Maybe wine? Just take the edge off. Wine won't fix this. I've just been transferred. Again? Welcoming the delegates at the opening ceremony, the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Olukayo Diegbetokun, stressed the need for gender inclusivity in policing, given the unique perspectives and skills women police officers bring to address community security needs. Crime Fighters correspondent reports that the IGP statement was met with enthusiasm, with the delegates acknowledging the significant impact it would have on their careers and the policing profession. I am super delighted to welcome you all to this regional training conference of the International Association of Women Police in Africa. This gathering marks a pivotal moment as we also launch the Nigerian Police Force Gender Policy. This conference brings together outstanding women police officers and law enforcement officials from across Africa and beyond. It aims to strengthen unity, enhance capabilities, and provide invaluable networking opportunities for women in policing within the African region. Policing in Africa faces unique challenges from transnational crime to domestic violence, demanding nuanced approaches, the collective wisdom and experiences shared by the women police officers present today will be crucial in crafting effective, culturally sensitive solutions. The International Association of Women Police plays a vital role globally, empowering and supporting women officers through collaboration and knowledge sharing. By providing essential tools and resources, the IAWP enables women to excel in their careers and contribute meaningfully to their communities. 
Top government functionaries and 520 delegates from 18 African countries, including Nigeria, Angola, Botswana, Ghana, Liberia, Kenya, Malawi, Morocco, Niger, Namibia, Rwanda, South Africa, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Congo attended the conference at the Nigeria Police Resource Center, Abuja. The wife of the President of Nigeria, Senator Luremi Tinubu, who was represented by the wife of the Minister of Works, Her Excellency, Rachel Umwahi, who declared the conference open, emphasized the need for a revitalized police force to serve Africa and Nigeria better. She extolled the IGP's assertion as a significant step in providing gender support and resources expected to help address their challenges and create a more inclusive and supportive policing environment. It adds as it is significantly aligned with the renewed hope agenda of His Excellency, Mr. President, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR. This team resonates deeply with the vision we hold for a rescue and prosperous Africa. Security is the bedrock of development. We tackle the multifaceted challenges we face with United Front by fostering collaboration and inclusiveness. We can harness the device, strength, and perceptive within our ranks to create more effective and suitable solutions. In aligning with Mr. President's Renewed Hope Agenda, this conference embodies our national commitment to revitalizing, strengthening our institutions to better serve our people. The Renewed Hope Agenda emphasizes inclusivity, transparency, and accountability, principles that are crucial for addressing security challenges effectively. Through this agenda, Nigeria is working to build a society where every citizen feels safe, valued, and empowered where law enforcement agencies operate with the highest standard of professionalism and integrity. In her welcome address, the chairperson of the IAWP Central Planning Committee and Force Gender Advisor to the Inspector General of Police, AIG Aishatu Abubakar Baju, underscored the significance of the event for Africa and the role of the Nigeria Police Force in hosting the prestigious gathering. For this conference, a total number of 520 delegates from 18 countries, including Nigeria, are attending. These countries include Ghana, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Botswana. Others are Liberia, Kenya, Malawi, Congo, United Kingdom, and Rwanda. We also have Namibia, Zambia, Angola, and of course, Nigeria, the hosts. The delegates came from the different law enforcement agencies, including immigration, customs, fire service, correctional services, federal road safety code, Department of State Security Services, NIA, and the uh, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This number is a significant increase from the five countries only that attended the 2023 edition in Tanzania. We are incredibly proud to host such a distinguished gathering of women leaders in the African continent. The theme for this conference, addressing Africa's security challenges and safety through cooperation and inclusivity is particularly timely. It reflects the growing need for innovative approaches to policing and the crucial contributions women make in this regard. One of the aims of the IAWP conference is to highlight the contributions of women in law enforcement and to reinforce the commitment towards gender equality within the rank 
of police forces across the continent. It is also aimed at providing women officers with resources and networking opportunities. Women police officers bring unique perspectives and experiences to, to the force everywhere in the world. And of course, Africa cannot be different. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Mohammed, delivered her message via Skype and expressed confidence that the conference will foster gender security and collective security architecture for the African continent. This gathering comes at a critical moment for our continent, with growing challenges to peace, security and development in the Sahel region, the Horn of Africa and the Great Lakes. The complexity of these challenges, which include political instability, growing insecurity, democratic backsliding, rising terrorism, shrinking civic space, and increasing criminality, including transnational organized crime. To counter these challenges, we need holistic, collaborative, and inclusive responses at all levels that consider the gender dimension, fostering diversity and inclusivity, and creating enabling environments through gender responsive approaches. The UN Gender Equality Acceleration Plan articulates this reality by emphasizing the need for the UN and its member states to step up gender transformative efforts, including that of security and law enforcement. Partnerships between UN entities, the African Union, police training centers, police contributing countries, civil society, academia and communities are key to fostering positive approaches, such as standardization, sharing best practices, coordinating efforts, and building and strengthening local capacities in policing in line with strategic guidance framework of international policing. The IGP, who killed two birds with one stone, unveiled the Nigeria Police Force MPF gender policy. He noted that the policy's essence is to address gender disparities in the Nigeria Police Force while charging women in the force to embrace it. Let us reaffirm our commitment to promoting gender equality within the police forces, ensuring equal opportunities for training, promotion, and decision-making, enhancing the safety and well-being of women officers, addressing issues of harassment, discrimination, and violence, building trust with communities, leveraging women officers' unique roles in fostering community police relations, collaborating regionally to tackle security challenges effectively through shared best practices, and concerted efforts, historically nominated by men, historically dominated by men, the policing profession now recognizes that women's inclusion isn't just about equality, but also about effectiveness. <laughs> Women bring diverse perspectives, empathy, and problem-solving skills critical for comprehensive law enforcement. Since assuming office as the Nigeria Inspector General of Police, my focus has been on comprehensive police reforms. These reforms prioritize the welfare of our personnel, recognizing them as the cornerstone of our security efforts. We are committed to reflecting the diversity of the communities we serve and upholding human rights. Notably, we've taken steps to increase female representation appointing a female officer as the first secretary and member of the force management team. I celebrate our female force secretary, AID Yutule Longa. I celebrate all other women officers who are contributing to decision-making processes of the Nigerian police and making significant contributions in their various communities. In 2010, the Nigerian Police Force pioneered the development of its gender policy, aligning with global best practices. Today, we proudly unveil its updated version. This policy promotes gender equality as a core value, integrating gender mainstreaming and responsive budgeting, aligned with international frameworks. It aims to reduce gender disparities within the force, ensuring equitable opportunities for all deserving officers. I extend heartfelt thanks to the technical committee led by AIG Aisha to Abubakar Baju, MNI, and supported by UN women and the German government for their dedication in reviewing and enhancing this policy. The future of African policy is bright 
led by women officers who are pivotal to our progress. The IAWP African Region Conference marks a significant step forward. Together, we can create a future where women in policing are empowered, respected, and equipped to make enduring contributions. The second vice president of IAWP from South Africa, Lieutenant General Leah Shibambo, highlighted the progress in empowering women in the force and commended the Inspector General of Police, Olukayo de Egbetokun, for promoting police women's interests. All it took was just a WhatsApp message to my sister, and here we are. I do not have words to express our appreciation for the support you, Mr. IG of Police, have given to us, not just your country, because this empowerment, this conference is for the whole of our region. And so, you know, you might not realize, but that which you have done is empowering women in our region. And I really want to thank you on behalf of the uh, women, all the women in our region. I am saying this because the IWP Africa chapter is committed to the empowerment of women in law enforcement from Cape to Cairo. We have expanded our definition of women, as you heard my friend Aisha explaining who, who are the people that we have invited, so that it's not only women that are in the police, but we have invited all women that are in law enforcement and in the security environment, so that we can all address the issues that we as women are facing. Hence the theme for the 2024 is, as we know, and you can see it right here in front, addressing Africa's security challenges and safety through collaboration and inclusivity. That collaboration is just that WhatsApp message that a person can send and we are able to, to meet up here today. I'm personally delighted to see the IAWP in our beautiful Africa, Africa, our home, growing from strength to strength. I have high hopes that for the future of the women in law enforcement in our region, we continue to see the collaboration continuing. Other dignitaries at the event included the former Vice President of Liberia, Her Excellency, Joel Taylor who delivered the keynote address. She praised the conference for its focus on gender inclusivity and equality in law enforcement and hailed the IGP's gender-sensitive policy. Just watching the movie that was played a few moments ago brought so many emotions to my mind. But the good thing is women in security is not a new phenomenon. As we gather over the next few days to talk about the ever-evolving need of women in governance, um, conflict, peace, and security, we continue to shift the balance and break glass ceilings. Even here in Nigeria, I heard that the current SG is the first female. Can we clap for our IG, who is a he for Chi Chi champion? We are all aware of the frameworks that have forced women into governance. And I say forced because it wasn't a normal occurrence. The Women's International League for Peace and Freedom first came about talking about the need for women involving women in armed conflicts. Then the Beijing Platform of Action, and then Resolution 1325. However, after all of these years, there is still a quest to increase the participation of women in the peace process. We are all aware of the challenges that women face in governance, whether you're in the security, in politics, or in civil society. Because of our cultural norms, restrictive cultural norms, it's difficult to allow women to ascend in a meaningful way. Even when you get into that space, there are a lot of threats and intimidations that somehow make you wonder, why am I even here? Like we felt from the women who were in the police force, trying to juggle between family responsibilities and being a prominent woman in her own field, ascending to the highest levels that she could. 
We still have inequitable access to education, poverty and economic inabilities that hinder women rising forward. Why you to fight? Because it is a fight for peace, for security, for inclusion. If you look at the numbers still low, women are still invisible in the peace process. Between 1992 and today, they are only make up 13% of negotiators, 3% of mediators, and 4% of signatories to the major peace processes. These numbers are too small and they must go up. It takes intentional action of those at the highest level to ensure that women are brought on board because they are capable, because they are committed, and because they too can make a difference. Our MC made a comment earlier about the fact that when God created the heavens and the earth, he gave man and woman a mandate. Multiply, replenish, keep control of the earth. The mandate was given to both males and females. It is clear that enhancing the space for women, peace and security in Africa and across the world is a must. No one person or no one part of society, a male part of the society, is able to take on all of the responsibilities. And I'm not sure when God created the heaven and the earth, the time between when he created man and when he created woman. But even God, our Father, realized that a woman was necessary to the fulfillment of the agenda that he had given us. Are women able? Yes. Are women capable? Yes. Are women committed? Yes. Should women be included? Yes. And this is the mandate coming from this conference, that we must be intentional about what we want. We must seek out the best and the brightest of which we have many, as you can see here in the conference today, and we must ensure that the space is opened up. The Minister of State for Police Affairs, the Minister of State for the FCT, the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Police Affairs, and the House Committee on Police Institutions also attended the event, demonstrating their support for gender inclusivity and equality in law enforcement. <laughs>